I'm Timothy J. O'Connor, Commissioner of the Chicago Police Department. There was a time when my busy teeming city was known as the crime center of the world. Happily, this is no longer so. One of the reasons for this change will be dramatized tonight. A report on a blonde tigress. In just a moment, I'll tell you more about the woman with the strange green eyes police of Chicago and the police of the western suburbs were bothered by a gang of three. Two men and a woman were starting an epidemic of holdups. Eleanor Jarman was tough and brutal, the leader of a gang ready for any kind of holdup, but specializing in small businesses. William Kennedy, a small time operator with a big mouth and muscles to match, was one of her partners. He usually worked close with her on their jobs. And the last of the ill-assorted threesome was a pug by the name of Leo Minecci. This ex-prize fighter had absorbed too many punches. He was dangerous. On a hot afternoon in August, this trio stopped at a small store on West Division Street. Good morning. Good morning, Miss. I'm giving a party, and I wonder if you have some really good caviar. Caviar, uh, table 19. Wait, I'll, I'll show you. Thank you. Just step this way. Here it is. I think this is an excellent... of the proprietor was brutally unnecessary and unprovoked, but that was the modus operandi of the blonde tigress. Mr. Hoey was a man of great courage. Dazed and mortally wounded, he still refused to give up. Help! Robbers! Police! Within minutes, the call came into precinct headquarters, where detectives Denny and Brinker were alerted. They wasted no time getting to the scene. A lot of people had a lot of ideas, adding up to a very general description of a blonde and two male gunmen. One woman said the blonde had eyes like a tigress. On the car, no one seemed to agree. The detectives thought they had lost this lead until Brinken felt a tug on his sleeve. Yes, son, what is it? I saw it, sir. Almost all of it. Good, I hope you can add something. It's just like they said. But that blonde woman, she's the tough one. And the, uh, the car, did you notice the car? Yes, sir. A new Nash, black, a sedan, four door. Its license number was 89716635. Smart boy. Thank you, sir. Had a pencil, but no paper. I'm training myself. Training yourself? Yes, sir, I want to be a cop. That's an ambition I question at times. But son, uh... Yes, sir? Don't say cop. We frown on that nickname. That scrawny, serious youngster who wanted to grow up to be a policeman gave us the first real lead. The license number brought us to the west side and someone named Pete Dodero. When you've been in this business as long as Denny and Brinken, you don't get too optimistic. But somehow this lead felt good to them. I'm Detective Brinken. This is Detective Denny. We're looking for Pete Dodero. I'm Pete Didero. That's the license number of your car? Mm. Sure, that's it. Why? What's the matter? Where's the car now? I loaned it to a friend of my brother's. Your brother home? No. What about his friend? What'd you say his name is? Leo Manessi. He here? No, no one's here. Where do you think we could find this, Leo? Lives right here in the neighborhood. Say, what's this all about? Your uh, car was involved in an accident. Accident? Why, that dirty no good. He swore he'd be careful. Now, maybe you'll tell us where he lives. I'll show you where. Uh, we can handle it. Just give us the address. All right. 829 Brock Road. A few blocks over. You can't miss it. Thanks. We'll see you get your car back. Tell that punchy bum for me. He better get it back. And in one piece. I haven't even got it paid for yet. 
Leo wasn't home, but his landlady gave us some important information about a blonde woman and a short, stocky man, naming Eleanor Jarman and William Kennedy. For good measure, she gave us the home address of one of Eleanor's boyfriends, Thomas Bittara. We're looking for Tom Bittara. Mr. Bittara just moved out. Well, we'd like to see his apartment. I can't let you into his apartment without his permission. He left a few things. We've got a warrant. But Mr. Batara's a gentleman. If he's a gentleman, he won't mind. Now, look, I... Oh, all right, but you're responsible. Luckily, Batara had not completed his move from the apartment. Giving the room a going over, the detectives found an interesting item, a packet of love letters. The letters were to suggest a plan to trip Batara. That must be Batara. Yeah, it must be. This is the gentleman? That's Batara. Take a look at this. Hmm. Interesting. I guess we've seen enough. Let's go. Thanks. What did they want? Atara. Where is he now? Other place, maybe. Find him. Tell him to stay clear of me. And another thing, if you've got this number written down any place, get rid of it. And tell Batara to lay low. Gotcha. Tara, huh? Yeah, cop's got a finger on him. We picked up Thomas Batara easily, tracing him through the post office. A preliminary questioning of the Romeo gained us nothing. We used every legitimate trick. He knew them all. The newspapers gave it a big play. We figured with this kind of publicity, the gang would stay buttoned up for a while. We wanted that bad since the gang had graduated to murder and probably wouldn't stop at one. Our plan was simple. Oh, that's, oh, that's fine, Joan. Now let's try the one that's giving you trouble. I think I'm moving too slow on my initial thrust. I know it, but it's the best way to overcome an assailant. Learn it, and you can go anywhere in safety. All set? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh, too slow. You've got to get hold of a thumb. Once more. That's it, honey. Now you've got me. A little more pressure. Now take me backward. Good girl. Nobody can break that hole when it's properly done. That's fine, Joan. You may need that sooner than you think. Hi, Inspector. Got a job for me? If you're ready, here. Oh! Oh! Am I? Well, I, I would say yes. <laughs> You get dressed, and uh, I'll fill you in on the details. <coughs> I know this Tommy boy type. He's in the In Love of Themselves class. And a penny ante guy who hangs on the coattails of real mobsters. He's booked now for disorderly conduct. When he gets out, you're going to have to make contact at once. All right. So I'm Joan Curley. I'm from St. Paul. Flashing a lot of money out to see the sights of the city, hmm? Correct. We're uh, betting that Batara will want to show you off to his wandering Eleanor. It's happened. You'll be covered at all times. But just in case, compliments of the department. Here's some money, and you have the credentials. Mm -hmm. What's this? It's a note from your cousin, the only person you know in Chicago. And here's her phone number. This number will be alert at all times if you have to make a contact call. We'll have a woman answer just in case. Well, I guess that's everything. Now look, Joan, if Batara takes you to the hideout, you'll be mingling with three killers. This uh, Jarman woman hates other women, and she loves brutality. If they even think they smell the law. I'm going into this with my eyes wide open. And we want you to come out the same way. Thank you. 
At the proper time, in accordance with our plan, Batara was released. Wasn't that stupid? I brought this all the way from St. Paul. It's a present for my cousin. I take it you're a stranger here. Yes. Now, where is her number? Oh, here it is. She says on the south side. But I only have her telephone number. Maybe I can help. I'm pretty handy in and around shy. Well, I hate to impose on you. It's no trouble. I was going to the south side anyway. Say, why don't we take a cab and I can show you the sights on the way. Or better still, let's have a drink, see the bright lights, and then go see your cousin. How about it? Well, it sounds like fun, but my cousin is expecting me. Call her and say you're busy for a time. I don't see why not. Well, let's go. Batara was a man of his word when it came to wine, women, and song, especially at someone else's expense. I had a wonderful day and evening. I'm sorry you had to pick up all the tabs. Oh, forget it. We haven't even made a dent. But I'd better call my cousin. I'll be right back. Okay, Grifter, put it back. The loot, the money, put it back. I had you pegged for a small time operator and I was right. Say what's your racket. Who says I've got a racket? You pack a rod. So I pack a rod. I don't buy this St. Paul stuff. Somehow you don't add up. Why not? I'll take this switch. First, you're the starry-eyed, good-looking kid from the Twin Cities. Then you pull a rod on me and turn to ice. All right, I'll level with you. I do have a racket. And I need a partner. I picked you up because I thought I might use you. But I can't. Why not? I need an older man, not overly good-looking. See you around. Detectives Brinken and Denny spent dreary hours waiting for a tip-off from Joan. Look, baby. Anything that brings in the kind of dough you spend is for me. So I made a mistake. I'm not small time. I'm working with one of the biggest. The biggest what? Skip it. When I get to know you better, maybe I'll cut you in. Talk words. Listen, I got an angle. Well, make it good and make it snappy. Let me see some identification. Nothing. Well, the St. Paul angle's okay. It got pretty hot there. I had to change the scene. <laughs> Brother, would you two make a pair? Me and who? You like her. Warm on the outside, freezing on the inside. Look, don't compare me with any of your old girlfriends. I'm in a class of my own. Who is she? Forget the name. Maybe you'd thaw her out if she saw you with me. Why, is she on a kick with someone else? Yeah. And uh, when she gets tired of him, she comes back to you. Hmm? Why don't you get off the string, Batera? Show her you're a man. Take it from me. When I know I can control them, I don't want them. And women are women the world over. Take me to see her. Don't rush me, baby. Joan's tour went into a second night. Batara hadn't lied about knowing Chicago's bright lights. Yes, he was a free spender, as long as he didn't have to pay for it. Detectives Denny and Brinken continued their constant watch. They began to fear Batara wouldn't take Joan to the blonde tigress. Baby, I made up my mind. You're in. How nice. You wanted an older man for your racket. Kennedy's your guy. Go on. Kennedy works for my girl, Eleanor Jarman. Go on. You mean you never heard of her? 
The blonde tigress? It seems to me I read her name someplace. I don't... So I think we can make a deal. She's kind of gone on Kennedy. So if you and him hit it off, it'll remove the competition. And I'll be solid. Yes, but that sounds like a lot of trouble. Look, you get what you want, I'll get what I want. Is that a deal? It's a deal. Is it far? 231 Pine Hill, let's go. Uh, I'll be right back. Where are you going? You know, I always have to let Cousin Mamie know where I am. Mamie? Joan. Uh, honey, I'm gonna be a little late. Uh, I'll be at... Uh... She'll be with me. Silly. The address is too... Let her guess. Let's go. Back way. But we came in the front. Look, baby, if they got a tail on me, this is one time I gotta lose them. repair the damage. Okay. Hurry it up. I'll be right back. Break that mirror and you got seven years bad luck. Let's not look. What we don't know won't hurt us. I told you not to get in touch with me. If we're not wanted here, let's fly the joint, honey. Come on. No, you don't, Blackie. You dealt yourself in. At least for a while. Look, honey, take it easy. This is my new girlfriend, Joan Perley. I don't care who she is. You had no business bringing her here. Come in and shut the door. Now, baby, let's find out a few things. Such as? Who are you? You heard the man. You try that again, and I'll shred you like confetti. You'll start giving some answers, or I'll have Leo work you over. Name? Joan Purley. Address, St. Paul. Mother's name, Martha. Height, 5 feet 5. Weight, 120. Age? Never mind. Find out for myself. Well, police special. Very interesting. What is your racket? Heisting, planning, anything to pay my rent. Who did you work with in St. Paul? Nobody you'd know. But, honey, you mentioned you work with Big Jake. Big Jake? That'll be easy to check. Make the call in Leo's room. And keep him out of here. I'm getting as punchy as he is. 
Go with him, Bataro. Now we're going to have a nice little get-together chat. All yours. I hope you're a phony. I'm gonna enjoy letting you have it. And if I'm not? I'll enjoy it anyway. She's a plant. Big Jake never heard of her. I thought so. What do we do with it? We don't do anything. Get back in the room. I want to enjoy this all by myself. Scared, honey. Too close, baby. Stand up, Blackie. You fall farther that way. Get up. You all right, Joan? All right, fellas, hands over your heads, line up against the wall. Nice work, Joan. Thanks. I was beginning to think you'd missed the party. You uh, look a little frayed around the edges. Oh? You looking for this? Thanks. I thought you'd lost me. I didn't see you or your car. Oh, well, we were mighty careful. After all, if you had seen us, your boyfriend might have seen us, too. Souvenir. To be filed under the heading of uh, close calls in the line of duty. Thank you. It was a close call, but Joan Purley completed an assignment because of her training and quick thinking. She typified the spirit and devotion of today's police women. True to type, Eleanor Jarman and Leo Minecci blamed the brutal Hoey killing on William Kennedy. Because of this, Kennedy died in the electric chair. The other two were given sentences of 199 years each. And since Patara, gave important information to the police, he was booked only for disorderly conduct. Attention, attention to all citizens and police. Wanted, escaped murderess, Eleanor Jarman, alias the Blonde Tigress. Eleanor Jarman, now in her 50s, is five feet tall, weight 100 to 120 pounds, blonde hair, which may be graying or dyed. Eyes gray. Complexion fair. Upper front teeth have noticeable peculiarity. Eleanor Jarman prefers large handbags. Repeating, Eleanor Jarman prefers large handbags. Warning, escaped murderess, Eleanor Jarman, alias the blonde tigress, may be armed and should be considered dangerous. Yes, Eleanor Jarman, the blonde tigress, escaped from prison and is still at large. If you have any information concerning this woman, please notify the Chicago Police Department, the Illinois State Reformatory for Women, or gangbusters at once. Next week, another case from authentic police records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord.
case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.